had a bit of a rough weekend the other weekend. Um, just couldn't seem to catch a break. Up way too late before uh, testing tune on a Saturday, trying to get a machine ready that we would end up not even running running that weekend anyhow. Um, so I guess the learning lesson is in there is don't bite off more than you can chew. If you're racing, if you got two guys and you're racing two sleds, just race two sleds and leave it at that. Um, so started off bad that way just to get to the get to the track and realize we'd forgot some essential stuff like helmets. Um, it's no big deal. We asked around, were able to borrow some of them. Um, had rebuilt the clutch for this F5. The the weights were riding into the side of the spider. Um, thought I was doing a good thing by doing that. Um, so we got some weird things going on here. When the before the clutch rebuild, this thing would would see we would see 9,000 RPM, probably more like 9,300 RPM. But when you look this up in the book, your your top RPM should be I don't know 8,800, probably as a max. So we're seeing over that these dashes are known to be pieces of junk. So uh, I'm not counting out that the crank sensor might be goofed up or the dash is goofed up or you know right now I'm sitting the machines off it's been off for a while but the tack or the the speedometer pegged at 32 miles an hour so something weird's going on electrically anyway um, this is my brother's race sled he went out and did a lap came back and said things Things turning 10,500 10, RPM. I said, there's no way it's turning 10,500 10, RPM. Whatever. So take it for a lap, take it for a lap. So take it for a lap. Well, I didn't make it much more than two turns. and It was colder than cold, cold out. And the ice was really hard. And I wasn't prepared for it. And didn't do a check lap. And was pushing too hard, too fast. And anyway, I rolled it in the corner. Yard sailed the darn thing. Sent. You know, the, the hood's all busted up, and we bent a tie rod, and all kinds of crap. Bent the handlebars, we got those semi-bent back now, but it was a shit show. Um, got it straightened back out, got it put together, said screw it, we're going to run it Sunday. Got up early Sunday morning, went out for a ride, it was still saying it was running 10,000 RPM, and I just rolled it through the parking lot and get, got on it a little bit. Yeah, it said 10,000 RPM, but mile per hour wise and sound wise, it just didn't didn't sound and feel like we were getting that high RPM. So something weird is going on. Said, well, go ahead and run it. Well, sure shit, we end up blowing the damn thing up in, in uh, the first race, second lap of the first race. So. Lack of sleep, I forgot to mention it was negative 20 degrees outside, plus, plus wind chill. Um, you know, not, it's not all sunshines and rainbows um, racing, and we're finding that out. Found that out the hard way this, this month. Uh, Got to try to focus back in, get things put back together, worry about one thing at a time go from there. Fortunately enough I got another 500 motor to put in this machine. Um, don't know much about it other than we bought a machine with it in it and I heard it run one time. Looking down the cylinders it looks fine but anyway long of the short is it gives me an opportunity to show you guys the engine removal and installation on an F5. You'll see some other things. I'll, I'll probably skip taping the hood back together or tie it, zip tying it back together but there's going to be a whole bunch of work getting this thing buttoned back up because my brother would like to race here again yet this year and I'd, I'd like to have a machine put back together for him so that he can. But Well, I'll just step you through um, engine removal. It'll include some of the videos I've already posted. Um, removing coolant, uh, taking a, a primary clutch off, a couple of the basic ones, but I'll hit hit on more specific to an 03 F5 
engine removal as we go. Um, so yeah, here we go. Well, here's a quick look at the <clears throat> the meltdown on the F5 we had. Um, there's our mag side piston. Um, as you can see, the rings welded in on the exhaust side, and that's some pretty significant scoring going on there. Um, mag side cylinder. Pretty well toast. Um, we are actually burning down on the PTO side too. You can see um, scoring up around the exhaust ports there, uh, as well as the rings were starting to stick on the PTO side piston, and that piston was starting to score. Um, after disassembling and looking at it, the lesson, I guess, that I'm learning on this one is related to top of the pistons. Sorry, you can see two is no wash. Um, they were starting to, starting to displace material. Um, starting to displace material. Le lesson learned here was related to, um, I believe it or not, oil injection. So in order to get cooling vents onto our uh, brake calipers, because these are sleds we're racing cross country, um, specifically on on the ice we're running into brake heat issues and how we remedied that as we were cutting in um, vents in the hoods you can get into that in a different video but in order to get good ventilation onto the caliper what we we're having to do was remove the get the oil reservoir out from its original location and at the time what seemed to be the easiest way to do that was to just do an oil pump delete by the black diamond extreme block off kit and remove it all together and go straight to pre premix um, did that had good luck with that but the other day we just had I think the perfect storm it was cold as cold could be out um, we didn't adjust jetting we, we really haven't done any jetting adjustment on that machine since we've had it um, and in years past or weekends past we never had an issue because temperature wasn't um, really an issue but negative 20 degree temps um, not accounting for the fact that once you go to premix you're actually creating a, a lean condition um, you, you're when you when you add the oil to the gas there's a, a ratio there, but that ratio will then change the amount of gas that's actually being pulled through your jets. So if you're if you're premixing, you should upsize your jets to run the same quote unquote fuel to air ratio. Uh, it's gonna be a story for another another video, I think, because I'm still digging in and learning about it myself, but. Long story short is I, I think we just had the perfect storm where it was, you know, 20 below. Uh, we were jetted fine, fine with oil injection for that temp or most warmer temps. Um, but since we were 
pre-mix and we were actually leaning the the engine out um, what kind of verified that for me was the fact that we were leaning out on both sides yeah the, the mag side appeared to to have it worse I could try to dig in to diagnose exactly what that's about but long of the short is uh, we were lean on both sides and burned down because of it and I'm attributing it to our oil injection delete so with that you know we got a second 500 motor that'll be putting in um, as you can see the oil injection pump is still on that machine or that motor um, and I plan to leave it on and do some talking about oil injection how that works the, the ratios and, and just try to look up and do some studying on it in the book so I can talk to you guys about it but anyhow that's was the explanation of the burn down on the 500 a I took the time to tear the motor apart even though I should have been working on other stuff but just wanted to throw that in here so uh, you guys know I'll be talking about some oil injection stuff here soon um, if you like these videos do me a solid and subscribe um, shoot me a like give me a you know reach out let me know what questions you have I try to keep up on on what you guys are asking so do my best but anyhow so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time